Hey there, this is John Gibbs, and I want to welcome you to Body Evolve TV and to my website, fatlossevolution.com. Today I've got a treat for you. I just did an interview with Molly Badger. I've considered her a friend for a lot of years. But back in April this last year, Molly joined my Body Evolve coaching program, which as of right now is a women's only mind-body transformation program. And Molly has seen amazing results with the program. I mean, just look at the progress that she's made. I got on Skype with Molly the other day and we talked about what she went through and what she had to do to be able to completely transform her body the way she has. And the awesome thing is she gives some amazing insight on real world tactics that will work for everybody and things that you must do to be able to transform your mind and body. Without further ado, let's jump into it. You know, like last time, <laughs> like we tried talking about last time and tried recording but didn't work. Um, give me, give, uh, give us a little bit of your backstory. You know, what led up to you joining Body Evolve and tell us a little okay. about yourself. Okay, so I am a mom of two. I have two little kids. Um, been married for about eight years, and. Um, I worked in pastry for the last about 13 years. Um, I went to culinary school and did that a lot and um, have always loved food and baking and cooking and all those kinds of things. Um, but I've also always struggled with my weight. Um, it's always been something that I wanted to be a little bit better at and tried so many different things, but just had a hard time getting where I wanted to be. And so... Um, when I heard about Body Evolve, it was perfect because I I tried a lot of different things, but I never had been able to go past like two or three weeks because I would always hit something that was so intense and completely changing, and it was hard for me to keep up that level of intensity for very long before just feeling completely burned out. Uh -huh. And then I would feel super down because I didn't keep it up. I couldn't keep going. I had this idea that I knew I could do way better, but I just didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to get to that point because it seemed so... Um, like it would just take so much energy and I didn't know where to find the extra energy to do it and make all those changes that felt like it had to be instant kind of changing. So that's kind of where I was at. I was feeling frustrated. I had kind of gotten more into fitness over the last year before I heard about Body Evolve and um, I had run a half marathon and it was great. And I had uh -huh. thought that would just like totally like slim me down <laughs> to wherever I wanted to be. And I thought I got done running the race and I went, hold on a second, this is not the body that I wanted. I did a good job and I'm really excited, but I was like, but I want more. And so <laughs> I wasn't sure what else to do with that. I knew I enjoyed being active, but a lot of it was, a lot was the pastry and like loving that so much that was kind of counteracting things. And so that's kind of where I was when I heard about it. So. Okay. So yeah, and that's actually some stuff I didn't know about. Um, I didn't know you went to culinary school. That's oh, yeah. really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. I loved it. Okay. It really so, um, Last time there was that we talked about something. I want to make sure that everyone hears this again. But you talked about how, um, or I guess not hear it again, but hear it for the first time. Um, but you talked about how um, that pastry chef that was part of your identity. Yeah, it really was. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't know what they want to do when they grow up. And I've known ever since I was a little kid that I wanted to be a chef. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of ridiculous. I'd ask for cookie sheets and stuff for Christmas when I was like <laughs> third and fourth grade. But um, anyway, but I always really wanted to do that. And so it really became a part of my identity. It's who I thought I was a lot. And because I'd done it from such a young age, and everyone that knew me knew that, that was, you know, that was like my defining kind of characteristic. And I took that on as that's who I am. Um, <clears throat> and so, it, I think it's, it was hard for me to kind of separate myself from something that I love doing. And so later on, well, we kind of talked more last time about what, you know, that kind of involved later on for me through the program. But um, anyway, so coming into the program, that was really kind of what I identified myself with is that's who I was. I'm a pastry chef. I, you know, this is what I do. I love it. Um, and so, but in a way it was really holding me back because it was not letting me see other aspects of myself. Cause that was just the only thing that I was really kind of identifying myself with. Uh huh. Okay. And I know at one point in the program, um, you kind of shared that you were, you were struggling with that. You were struggling with the aspect of you have all these pastries that you're making and you feel like that was getting in the way. How did yeah. you feel like, um, you were able to overcome that? 
You know, honestly, it was really interesting because I was finding that I hadn't, I was hitting all my workouts really hard as we were going through the program and just loving it. And the diet, I was working on the habits we were doing there and that was feeling really good, but I was still really holding on to this, like, I need to bake. I <laughs> love sugar and pastry and there's nothing wrong with it kind of a thing. And it was like a security blanket. I think that I didn't realize that I was kind of having a hard time changing my lifestyle. And so I would hold on to that so hard and I was baking a lot and not even for anything important. Like I was baking like crazy and sending treats to work with my husband. Like just give these away. I just want to do this. But I was also eating a lot in the process, not realizing it. Anyway, so I wrote to you and I was like, I'm so frustrated. I don't feel like I've seen any progress in like the last four or five weeks. I don't know what's going on. I think it's this. And I think you recommended that I started writing down, you know, what I was eating and I thought I was being so good when really I was having a little bit of this and that kind of everywhere. And I hadn't realized just how much it was kind of getting into kind of getting in my way. Uh -huh. And so, um, so that week that I looked at that, I suddenly, I don't know what it was that clicked exactly, but you had mentioned, you know, well, if you're wanting to cook so much, why not? Because we, we had talked once or twice before about, you know, possibly looking for healthier recipes and compiling some. And so I kind of thought about that a little bit. And suddenly I just had this really big insight and it felt huge, monumental revelation for me that I could be somebody different. I Maybe I didn't need all of this pastry. And I had kind of come to a point not realizing it that I felt like I needed it in order to know who I was. And when I realized maybe I don't need this and maybe I'm a different person than I ever thought I was. Maybe this is just something that I enjoy and not something that I am. And at that point, I was able to just really let go. And it was a huge week for me. I had never thought that I could do anything different. <laughs> or I, I know that sounds so silly, but honestly, I hadn't realized how much that I identified myself with that until I suddenly thought, well, maybe I just don't need it. Maybe I just don't want it. Maybe I want something else. And it was like this mind blowing revelation. And and then that whole week, I just felt like, okay, I'm going to throw myself and really, I realized that I just love the cooking part of it so much. And so I started really throwing myself into finding, you know, other healthy recipes and spending my time there and doing something that worked for me rather than that was fighting against me. Mm -hmm. And um, it honestly, that week, I couldn't believe the progress that I made that week. It was just I'm sure a lot of it was that I wasn't eating that, but a huge part was the mental shift and suddenly this huge positive like feeling in my life that I wasn't struggling inside of myself. I was working with myself rather than fighting against it, you know? And so then that next week, I think I told you, I, I like weighed myself three times and did all my measurements. Three times <laughs> I couldn't believe how much had changed. And it was really exciting. And it was, I think it was even more exciting to know that I could be, someone new and I could be a different person and I could um, find excitement in new things, even though I'm like in my thirties, you know, like that was just uh -huh. exciting to me that I'm not the same person, you know, and that change was really exciting. That's awesome. You know, and, and actually there was something that you said to me once that made me realize what I'm actually doing, or I guess put it in terms, uh, in certain terms. Um, because I guess to kind of let the cat out of the bag, you and I are working on a recipe book right now. Mm -hmm. And it's it's going in my opinion it's going to kind of be a revolutionary type thing because uh, it's it's going to be awesome so I'm excited about it. But um, you said something when we were kind of going back and forth with, about the recipes. Um, you said that you know you felt like this program is taking people where they are now, kind of where you go, start where you stand, and mm -hmm. then work your way forward. Which I totally agree with. I I never thought that I was doing that, but it is. That's yeah. completely what I'm doing. And see, for you, when I when I was looking at when I got that email, that where you were frustrated, and um, I looked at that and I said, okay, you know, again, not knowing that I was doing this, I'm like, where is she? I know she's an amazing cook. I mean, I knew you were a pastry chef. Again, we went to high school together, and I still right. enjoyed all those pastries. But um, <laughs> um, so I knew that that was a skill of yours. So I wanted to help you see, okay, let's keep that skill, and let's take it in a positive direction, which, I mean, you just run with it, which I think is awesome. It's, it's been so great. And I think that really is, it's just finding something. Cause I think that a lot of times what keeps us from, you know, a different kind of lifestyle, a fit and healthy lifestyle, if we are not living one of those is not feeling like we can identify, not feeling like there's anything inside of us that identifies with that. You know, that's so different. That's so scary. That's so much change. It's nothing I'm interested in. And I think a lot of things that are emphasized in the program are, you know, find something that you love. I mean, if you're, you know, on cardio and interval days, if you love to bike, then bike, you know, don't put yourself mm -hmm. on a treadmill if you don't love the treadmill, you know, and things like that. And finding that actually inside of us, we all have that fit, healthy person who's 
craving that activity. It's just a matter of finding the right way to get in touch with that, you know, and just finding that, you know, where you are and then taking steps from there to build and make it better just a little bit at a time. So I totally agree. I think it's just, that's one of the coolest parts about the program to me. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. So I have a question. So you've made some amazing progress. Um, I mean, I, I can't remember. I forgot to pull up your measurements and your numbers, but I think you've lost well over 30 pounds or close to 30 pounds close, in the last yeah. little while. Um, your pictures, your change in pictures have been awesome. And I guess we'll, we'll, I want to talk about this again, but just a couple weeks ago, you sent yeah. me an email. It was, okay, it's Christmas time. Um, yeah. you, your family has made a huge change in the last little while with moving and some other stuff going right. on, right? Yeah. Uh, job changes and things like that. So there's been yeah. some big things going on in your family. And you mm -hmm. sent me an email saying, I'm just so frustrated. I'm not making progress. I've got yeah. all this stuff going on. And the entire throughout the entire email, the only thing I heard was stress. Yeah. There's stress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all this stress going on. <laughs> But knowing your personality, you were saying, but I've got to push harder. I've got to get in the gym, work harder. I've just got to, I can't get over this, but I've got to do it because I've got to work harder. Right. So my recommendation to you was to stop, basically, was to go to the gym every day because I didn't want you to stop going to the gym, Right. but walk on the treadmill. Yeah. I mean, how did you feel about that? <laughs> it was so hard. It was so hard. It was so funny to me. Like, I could get there and I, uh, okay, I can do this. And it's so funny because I'm sure that hard workouts are more stressful to other people, but walking on the treadmill was just really hard for me. But at the same time, it was when I had been sick for also for a couple weeks before and just mm -hmm. couldn't get rid of this cold. And I thought, what is going on with me? It was so frustrating because I was so looking forward to just just running, you know, and um, anyway, but I'd get there and I'd walk on the channel, but at the same time, when you did tell me to back off a little bit, it was actually really nice because it kind of felt like a doctor's note. Like I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't being lazy myself. I was like, oh, well, he told me that I need to back off. Okay, I can do this. I don't uh -huh. feel guilty or stressed about it. And honestly, in the first few days, I started feeling so much better. It was just, it was really nice to kind of shift my focus and take a step back instead of you know, I really, I am one of those people that I just want to run 100%, 110 <laughs> or 150%. And, and I love that feeling, but it was about the getting the relaxation in and the rest and taking a step back. And also, cause I'd said in that email that I sent you, here are my pictures. They don't look any different than the last time. I don't think there's any progress at all. And, um, it was interesting cause then you sent me a kind of a compilation of all the different pictures that we've had so far. And I had honestly seeing it lined up. I thought, Oh my gosh, they are different. And it was cause I was just so close and so in the situation and not, not, um, giving myself any benefit of the doubt. I was just frustrated that I couldn't even see that change until I kind of backed off a little bit and you send it to me. So it was really helpful. It was really hard, but it was really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. the cool thing I thought, thought about it was the previous few weeks, your, the changes in your measurements, they weren't really there. The pictures did show right. a little bit of a change, but your right. inches and your weight and stuff like that wasn't changing. And then you yeah. took that week off, which should go right. against all, all logic if you right. push hard, you should see better results, but you took the week off yeah. and you, I can't remember what the number was, but I think it was like four to six pounds you lost, inches, yeah. you're losing a half inch off of everywhere. So you saw a lot yeah. of progress doing that. It, it's true. And it doesn't seem to make any logical sense. Like I still think about it and I'm like, that's amazing that rest can do that because my brain just doesn't think that way. It's still like wrapping around, even though it's been like weeks and months of you telling us this is what happens, <laughs> so <it's really laughs> good, you know, but, um, but it actually, it was just really awesome to see that it's, it's good to take it down sometimes and to listen to your body and to be so in tune with what's going on that you can say, you know what, it's okay for me to take it back a notch today. Cause that's what my body needs, you know, instead of always having to run uh -huh. that fast, but it was pretty awesome. So it was, it was a huge jump and it was a big confidence boost. And I thought, okay, good. I'm still in this. This is great. You know? so. uh -huh. And, and you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with going 110% for a short period of time. But like right. you said, the whole, my whole goal is to help you learn how to, to understand your body and understand what you need to do. Um, and from the email, I could hear your body was basically saying, okay, I'm sick. I'm stressed. Right. I've got all this stuff on my shoulders right now. Can we please take a little bit of a break? Right. And I mean, as soon as you did that, it's, your progress is awesome. Yeah. And I think also it kind of makes it more of a lifestyle change. Cause like you said, you can only run 110% just for a little while. And I think that's probably why it was always so frustrating to me to try new programs and things before I started body, body evolve. Cause it was that like crazy amount of intensity. And then, uh -huh. 
and you can only keep that up for so long. And I think so learning about, you know, the ebb and flow of things and just a little bit of improvement every day is really what makes it be able to be a lifestyle change rather than you're on a diet or you're doing this crazy program or, you know, things like that. It's something that you, I'm going to be able to keep doing for the rest of my life because it's, it's not something that's just so high intensity. I can't keep that up. So that's exciting to me that I'm learning. I think a while ago in one of the lessons you're telling us about, you know, kind of like writing our own um, manual for someone, like if someone had to take care of us, like what we would, you know, be learning about ourselves as we were learning about diet and things. And I think that's one of the coolest parts is that we're actually learning how to make our life what it needs to be for the rest of our life. It's, it's just a learning process and learning how our bodies work and learning what to do to take care of ourselves. So it, it's really awesome. That's cool. That's cool. So what do you think that other women are struggling with? Because, okay, every year, it's New Year's resolution time. Every year, someone starts the New Year's resolutions. And I think it was Forbes magazine came out and said that only 8% of people actually succeed at their New Year's resolutions, which yeah. is awful. Yeah, sad. But, so true. I mean, like, when you talk to people, you know that's the case, but it's so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what do you think that, that women are doing that's, that's keeping them from being able to lose or to be able to see the results they want to see? I think a big part of that, honestly, is that as women, we just really put ourselves on the back burner. I think we're, we're so, there's such a connotation, I think, in our society and within individual cultures that, you know, to take care of yourself is selfish. It's not, it's not what a woman should be. And, or I guess what anybody should be, because it's, it goes the same for men too. But, but I think especially for women, we're supposed to be these selfless, charitable, amazing people who never think of ourselves, who are always giving and again, you can only do that for a little while before you're completely burned out, you know? And I think that if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're also not placing that worth that needs to be there uh, on ourselves. You know, we're saying that I am not worth as much as my children or my spouse or, you know, my neighborhood or my community and my church mm -hmm. and things like that. And I think that that really takes a toll. And I think that if we could value ourselves enough and say, you know what, when company is coming, something else is going to have to slide, not me. I'm not putting all of my goals on the sidelines because I'm important enough that I am going to the gym because that's important to me and I'm going to do that, you know? And so I think that's a really big issue. I think for women is that, you know, we always, we have these, you know, self-esteem issues, I think a lot with women because <laughs> of media, because of all these other things. But mm -hmm. I think if we could start by recognizing our own worth and recognizing that our goal goals are worth enough that someone else can wait for a minute while we do it, you know, I think not, and and again, that sounds like it's selfish, but you can't take care of anybody else until you're taking care of yourself first, you know. And so in order to be those kinds of people that we want to be, then I think we need to do that and make sure that we're not, you know, throwing ourselves to the sidelines. Um, but I think another thing, too, is that, um, oh, and I just lost my train of thought. Maybe it'll come back to you. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. But I think that really is a big part of it. Uh -huh. so, yeah. No, you know, I think that's so cool, just what you said there, because um, – one thing that I see is, you know, like like you said, so many women, and I, I do see it more in women than I do in men, um, but women, you're taught that you are the caregiver, and in most roles, women are the caregiver, but again, like you said, you can't take care of your family the best you can until you've taken care of yourself first. True. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, like they say with a, um, when you're on the airplane with a gas mask, right. you got to put mm -hmm. yours on first before you can help anyone else. It's so, so true. It's so true. And I think that I think the other thing, too, is um, this is what I was going to say. And I remembered um, anyway, but it's that I think we hold ourselves to uh, a high um, a high standard of perfection, I think, as women, too. And I think part of that is because we really honestly we see so much potential in ourselves. We know what we want to become. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's what I felt so often is I know I can do better. I know I can do amazing things. I don't always know how to get there and I'm not there yet. But that's the problem is that we hold ourselves to a standard of doing these amazing things and being so perfect when we really aren't perfect yet, you know? And so I think that that's one of the reasons why New Year's resolutions go south so often is that we don't give ourselves any room to have an off day. Mm -hmm. We don't allow ourselves to have, you know, have to take a step back for a little while if life and situation and things like that are kind of taking more of our energy. I think we just think it's all over and we failed and it's done instead of saying, okay, I mean, it's, yeah, if we eat something wrong or, you know, don't fulfill our goal for that day, we don't just bag it all and forget it. We just say, okay, we're going to start from where we are. We're going to pick this back up again and go. And I think that that's one of the other major reasons why 
by women and why everybody have a hard time with these goal setting is that we need to recognize that we just need to get a little bit better every single day and not mm -hmm. be instantly overnight perfect, which is way hard to do. But it's kind of those things that you have to tell yourself, I guess. Yeah, that, that's totally true. And you know, I was just thinking about something. Um, it's almost kind of a, a perspective thing. So mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at it through a different, through kind of the wrong frame, I guess. Because think about New Year's resolutions. Um, there's a, a trainer from California that I've been talking to a little bit, and he has this way of setting up his resolutions. Instead of saying, I'm going to work out every single day this year, or I'm going to work out four days a week every week, um, he says, I'm going to get 250 workouts in, in the year. Because for him, he knows that he's he travels the the world basically um, speaking, and he knows mm -hmm. that there's some weeks where he's not even get, he's not going to get one workout in, but there's mm -hmm. other weeks where he could work out six days a week. So for yeah. him, it's more a total number. So if if he was to go off of the typical resolution, which is, yeah. um, you know, I'm going to train three days a week every week, mm -hmm. by week two he's done. Right. He's already failed. Yeah. So I and think that's, it's, that's a cool way to think about it. That's well, and nice taking your own, I mean, feeling confident enough to know this is what my life is, that I need to work with this rather than I need to go with the, you know, kind of the tide of popular opinion and say that's the only way to do it. You know, that's cool. Exactly. I think that's awesome. So, okay. You're still, you're still doing the program. You've got probably about, I think you've only got like two or three, about three months left in the program. Yeah. You've got yeah. a photo shoot coming up in about two months, so yes. we're getting ready for that. Excited. We're excited about that. But yeah. how do you feel like your life has changed since you've started and gone this far through the program? You know, honestly, I feel like it's changed so much, and I don't realize it until I look back. And again, that whole composite of pictures that you sent me from the very first to now, I hadn't realized how much I changed because I saw that person, and I felt like I, I didn't even recognize her. It was just really crazy. And then I started thinking about everything that's changed, and so much has changed. I feel like my confidence level is huge. I just, mm -hmm. I, I've always been a really social person and I love being around people and I love being up in front of people. I, I taught, well, I taught pastry classes for a really long time and I, <laughs> I love teaching and doing those kinds of things. But, um, anyway, but it's just interesting to see how I am in social situations. I feel like I have more of my personality coming out than ever before. I hadn't realized how much I was holding back sometimes because I was self-conscious or because I was, you know, wondering what people might be thinking of me or how this, shirt was fitting or, you know, things like that were just distracting. And I, I don't feel like I have those distractions anymore at all. And, and that is really nice because I feel like I can be who I want to be and what I want to be and do what I want. And I don't have all these other things kind of nagging at the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really nice and very liberating. I hadn't realized until I got away from that, that I'm like, wow, this is such a greater <laughs> quality <laughs> of social life, you know? And then on top of that, I feel like physically, I feel so comfortable and confident and just really just comfortable with myself. I feel like, you know, I play with my kids and I'm not kind of like lagging or not really wanting to get out and be active. And I feel like, you know, I just, I love the lifestyle that has been created that we've just become such an active family. And my daughter loves to run races where we sign up and we run one K's and five K's together and things like that. And even um, the diet thing was something that was really interesting because for the first while of the program, it was like, I had my meal and that was modified. And then my, and then I had the meal for my family because they were kind of still doing a lot of different things. And I wasn't sure how to do that because my husband is one that is super supportive, but if he's going to make a change, he has to decide for himself and mm -hmm. nobody imposes it or it's, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> and so I, I wanted him to come along with me, but I thought, I know that for him, he needs to get to a point where he wants to do this and he decides instead of me kind of putting it on him. Uh -huh. And so um, the first while was kind of this separation, like, okay, I'll eat this and you guys eat this and that worked. And then in the last couple of months, it's just morphed into, this is just what we all do. And it's been really cool because my husband seeing all of the progress that I've made and him wanting to make some of his own has been actually really excited and very um, proactive on his side and just saying, okay, what, what should I eat? What should I do about this? What should I do about this? And we uh -huh. just all come together and it's been really awesome because I mean, I find when, and I, I told you this before, but when we sit around the dinner table, you know, I tell my kids when we're eating different vegetables, well, this is what this will do for you. We talk about, okay, what does this do? What does this do? And they say, oh, well, chicken gives me strong muscles. And they love to flex their muscles and they'll show me. And, and it was really fun. And I was out the other night and I came home. My husband told me when um, 
he had put the kids to bed or after dinner, I guess he had, we had cooked salmon for dinner. And my daughter said, you know, dad, the salmon makes my brain really smart. It makes my muscles really strong. That's why I'm going to eat it. I love it. You know? And, and I was just so excited. I wasn't even there prompting it. She had just done it all on her own. And I, I love that. I love helping them understand so that they can start off. Cause I feel like I would love them to start off um, even better than I did as a kid, like knowing things and knowing why to do things and not just, eat your vegetables because they're good for you. That's the end of the story. Or you can't get down from the dinner table until you eat them all gone kind of uh -huh. thing. But to actually really have them understand and want that kind of a lifestyle so that, again, it's a lifestyle. It's not just something that's imposed or something that you just try for a little while. Anyway, so that's I think that's been one of the biggest changes. And the most exciting to me is just this, you know, I don't know, this um, excitement and like activity and knowledge that we've just taken on as a family. It's really awesome. I like that. That's cool. That's really cool. The thing I liked about, and I, I shared this with you before about the kids. Yeah. Oh, and there's one of your kids yeah. right there. <laughs> oh, hi. I <laughs> know with Reese, okay? Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Um, but um, when, when you share with the kids, you're telling them why the food is good for them and how it helps them. And I think, and throughout this program, I've, I've tried to share with people and help people understand that that, that question, why? is a really important uh, kind of a driver for what we do and how yeah. we do things. And there's some studies that have actually been shown that if you tell your kids why a food is good for them, they're more likely to eat it. So like you awesome. did with, your, with the salmon yeah. and with everything and all that stuff, you're telling them what it's doing for them. And instead of them just going, you know, the kids are always asking, you know, you t say do this. Well, why? You yeah. know, they want to know that. So I think what you do with them is really helps them so they know, okay, now I, I was told to eat broccoli. It tastes awful, but why do I do this? And now they start to get the understanding of why, and they start eating it, and they start to enjoy it more. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. It's really true. And I think that's one of the things I love the most about the whole program is talking about a why. Because I think that so often there's been, well, at the beginning of the program and throughout other times in my life, I thought, oh, I really want to get fit because of this or this or this. And it hasn't been a really deep and motivating. There's, you know, wanting to fit into a size, whatever, gene mm -hmm. is only motivating for so long. Or, you know, wanting to look good for this is only motivating for so long and realizing that it has to be something deeper, something that really speaks to you. And that, you know, even in those hard times when you're not feeling like it or not wanting to eat the broccoli, you know, you know why you're really doing everything. And I think that's just so motivating to find that really deeper level of it. Uh -huh. you know and i found that that when with that original why because most people when you ask them why they want to lose weight it's oh i've got yeah. a cruise coming up I've, right. it's swimsuit season you know i want to look a little bit better but um there was one day that i was working with somebody and i just i was like i'm going to find out the real reason i kept asking why every uh -huh. time they'd give me an answer i'm like well why well why and it got to the point where it was like getting annoying but yeah. we finally got down to the, the deeper root they wanted to look cute or be able to wear cute clothes and uh -huh. when we found out why, it was because of their relationship with their mom. They wanted a better relationship with their mom, and they tied clothes with their mom because of just the way they grew up. They, that tie seemed to come together for them. Yeah. So when we finally got that ultimate why, uh -huh. their motivation went up. They, they worked a lot harder. They, they, things became easier for them. Huh. That's so awesome. I think it's yeah. cool that you're able to help your kids with that and your family with that too and yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's really awesome. I agree. It, it's been really motivating. My my personal why has been to see what I can actually become, I think, is that is that potential, you know, and I think somehow uh -huh. I've always felt like I could do more and I could be more. I wasn't sure how to get there. And so it's been really exciting to see that actually happening. And so to see I can, you know, participate. I'm actually athletic, which I never, <laughs> ever thought that I would be before. Played one horrible season of soccer my sophomore year in high school, and it was awful, and I hated it so much. <laughs> and, and then later I'm like, actually, I really like this. This is really fun. I always kind of knew there was something there. So it is. It's really driving. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. All right. Well, I don't want to take all your time today, um, but just one quick question because I know there's a lot of people who are – I mean people who are watching this are kind of contemplating, okay, what is this program? Why should I do it? Getting that why. Okay. But what would you tell them? How could you help kind of help them with their decision? You know, honestly, I think that – I, I would say the reason to do it would be because this is just one of the best programs I've ever seen for being accessible and being something that you can do from the very beginning. Because in the very beginning, I mean, you're giving us, it's a habit-based coaching, which is something that I'd never done before, which was so great for me. I thought, you know, we, I, like we said before, I'm one of those that just loves to dive in completely and change everything mm -hmm. right 
the beginning, but it wasn't something that I could do very well because it was it was foreign to what I'd been doing. And I think that this is one of the best programs because it does, it just takes right where you are and it builds from that. And it, the focus is just that it's a little bit better every day. And it's okay if you're not amazing, you're not shooting the moon every single day, but if you're getting a little bit better, or even if sometimes if you're just going through the motions of it, just going to the gym and keeping that habit, then mm -hmm. you're doing exactly everything that you need to do. And it feels like a much, um, I mentioned this to you before, but it's a much kinder kind of a program. <laughs> you know, I always thought that personal training was awful and they yell at you and like, this is going to be miserable and you're going to hate it. And, and that's the only way to do it. And uh -huh. I think that the cool thing about this program is that it's not that at all. It's nothing but support. It is, it is an awesome way to feel little victories every single day and to start from where you are and build from there. And, and every little one of those victories just honestly builds confidence. And I think that that's one of the things that's really lacking in, in those of us and who are looking for a change, especially in our physical appearance and fitness level and health level, is that it's that confidence that's lacking. And so I think what's so great about it is that the confidence is being built from the very beginning, doing these things that, you know, you never thought that you could do mm -hmm. and then you know halfway through the program I remember you told us all you know I know that a lot of you don't think you're athletes well guess what these are athletic workouts that you are athletes you're doing the same aircrafts that everyone else is doing and and on the form you could just kind of feel everybody just kind of sit a little bit taller and be a little bit prouder <laughs> of what they were doing and I think that's one of the best things is that it's so supportive and it's so encouraging and it's so um, I don't know. It's just, it's just such a positive program that I think that that is one of the best things is that it's, you can do this. This is one of those that you can do. This is not one of those crazy P90X, whatever, where we're going to rip you apart and you're going to feel broken all the time. You're going to see, and you're going to unlock some real potential and that's going to be really exciting. And so that, I think that's what I'd say is give it a try because it is just, it really is awesome. And the results are really incredible as well. I am amazed at how much progress that I've made. I never thought that I would be where I am right now, like ever. I really didn't. <laughs> I always wanted to, but I didn't know that I could do it. And I think that it's, you know, learning about that why. And it's also all this empowerment that comes from understanding, learning how our bodies work, learning what diet actually is, learning what things do, learning about working out, learning about health and, and making it that lifestyle change. And so if that's what you're looking for, if you want something to last your whole life, then this is just such an awesome program for that. It's just great. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, I guess that's all I, I, I have for you today, I guess. Um, well, Good. thanks again, and I hope to talk to you soon. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> thanks, John. Okay, thanks. The Bodyball Transformation Program is currently closed, but you're in luck. We're getting really close to opening the doors again for this life-changing program for a new group of women. Are you going to be one of the next success stories? That decision is entirely up to you, but I'm here to help you out. Just enter your email below and I'll let you know when the next Body Vault Transformation program starts. Thanks for watching. This is John Gibson and I'm out. Whoa.